This college football picks week two edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. Sports are back, and MyBookie is now offering a 100% deposit bonus when you use the promo code SGP. That's MyBookie.ag, promo code SGP to play, win, and get paid. We're also brought to you by the leaders in daily fantasy, DraftKings. For a limited time, new users can get a free shot at $1 million top prize and $3 million in total prizes. Don't miss this extra special week one bonus. Enter code SGP to get a free shot at the $1 million top prize with your first deposit. That's code SGP only at DraftKings. We're also brought to you by BetQL. Want to get an advantage over the sports book with NBA, NHL, college football, MLB, and the NFL back in action? You need to download BetQL, the only app you'll need to make smart bets this season. Head to betql.co and enter code SGP20 for 20% off your first subscription. That's betql.co, promo code SGP20. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in pay per head providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sports book. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free. Over at aspread.com slash SGP. That's aspread.com slash SGP. Finally, don't forget to sign up for the free rule football contest where we're giving away up to $5,000 for the best NFL handicappers this season. Sign up for free today at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash contest. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash contest. Welcome, everyone, to the sports. Gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money room with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? God, I'm, it's football, bro. Football. It is. We got football going, college football. You did it to me again, too. You, you, we do the mic checks before the show, and you're like, check, 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 check. And then football comes on, and it's time to talk like a man. Well, Kramer, you know how it is. It's I, I, I save a little bit for game day. We just did a Monday yeah. Night Madden. Now we're doing our first of our weekly college football picks, starting off with week two. Joining us in studio, as always, Pick Dundee, aka the Danta Base. What's up, Colby? Well, you know, just, uh, just, Cruising into week two, guys. Uh, cruising, sliding, whatever you yeah. need to do. Uh, I know Just you're. What you're really talking about is DMs. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about picking games. I, obviously, if you haven't been on Twitter yet this year, I know a lot of our fans don't don't go to Twitter all the time just for our show. So if you get back to Twitter, what you would see is that Colby is absolutely on fire. Eight, eight and one out of the nine games so far. What, Should have been nine and zero. Oh. What did you Should've get wrong? Should have been nine and zero. Oh. I got uh, Stephen F. Austin UTEP wrong. Fucking loser. And if you listen to my Periscope, I said that was the one game I didn't trust, but I should have hit that. Wait, I they're, fucking, they're playing basketball right now. <laughs> I, I'll be honest. I, I, when you first threw out the pick Dundee thing, I was kind of on the fence. Didn't really like it as a nickname, and and thought you couldn't give yourself a nickname. But now coming out of the gate, eight and one against the spread. Earning your keep here at yeah. the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. I'm all in. Pick Dundee, dance to Dundee, whatever you want. <laughs> I'm calling, uh, and Whoa. and let's Woo. just keep stacking the cash. I found myself going hard into college football because, <laughs> hey, it's, it's football. It's fucking yeah. on. I'm in. I'm two and zero, undefeated, betting on Central Arkansas. Congratulations, didn't, Sean. Didn't think I would live in a world where I bet twice on Central <laughs> Arkansas within five days. They covered both times. God bless this country. Look, with San Diego State out, I feel like there are new gals. There are new gals. Yeah, yeah. And wait, what is there? What is the what, Bears? The Bears. Okay. The Bears. The Bears. The Bears of Central Arkansas. We have some, and we. Oh God. I love that football's back, and I think we have some real games this week. No offense to the games last week. Yes. And we're uh, while we're recording this, we're watching BYU Navy. Colby, of course, the the streak looking good so far. Don't want to jinx I locked it. it. I locked it. I, that would make me five and zero on locks if this hits. If yeah. and and while we're taping this, BYU is up fourteen to nothing. Uh, Colby had throughout BYU yeah. as his pick, oh, catching a couple points. Well, in there. the pregame, as soon as they discussed how Navy was taking it, playing it safe, and not tackling in the preseason yeah. to avoid contact, immediately wanted to load up on the opposite <laughs> team, aka BYU. <laughs> There we go. That's the college football sound. Cause we're talking about college football game day. We got Herb Street crying. People are emotional. We're fired up. Football is back. College football is back. And of course, mybookie.ag. They never went anywhere. But you know what's back over at mybookie.ag? A sweet 100% deposit bonus. We're just watching that hunk. Uh, Trevor Lawrence on the screen. Amazing hair. <laughs> Kenny covered the spread. That's all we really care about, not the hair. 
mybookie.ag. Promo code SGP. 100% deposit bonus. Play win and get oh. paid. Get in on that super contest for the NFL. They got it all. Mybookie.ag. Promo code SGP. Jesus. And if you don't recall from uh, last year or previous years, yes, we do a uh, we do a Colby dance six pack where yes. Colby picks six games. Then we do some top twenty five games. Yes. And then we have a couple bonus games. Yes. So we're looking this week. We got a twelve game slate. Let's oh, crack things wait, open. So you're telling me we were able to fill out the slate with a full schedule of twelve games. That's what I want to hear, Sean. <laughs> I noticed we didn't talk about last year. I noticed we didn't talk about our stellar records last year, Sean. <laughs> what were our stellar records? Well, on? Uh, Ryan Real Money Kramer, he brought it home, number one spot, forty eight per forty eight point four percent against the spread. <laughs> Sean, you were in second at forty seven point four percent. Wow, we dominated and, the dance. And Colby, forty six percent. If there's one bright spot to take away. I finished a whopping 500 in the top 25 picks. Meanwhile, Sean, you were absolutely crushing the Twitter picks 18, 15, and four. <laughs> yep. So that's squ- my wheelhouse. <laughs> People who send money. games in no, on Twitter. In all seriousness, the reason you listened last year is because we, we collectively hit almost half of our dogs. And, yes. that, and that, yeah. that's how you get paid. Hungry dogs do run faster. And they cash bigger. I've noticed that. Okay. Now, this is a fresh year. We are going to dominate. I have it upon. I mean, Colby's already nine and one. What could possibly go wrong? Eight and one, man. You're saying I already won this one. You know what I mean? By the, the time BYU people game. are listening, yeah. you're nine and one. <laughs> All right, Sean. What do? How do we start now? Let's do it. Two lane. Oh shit! Squaring off against South Alabama in Mobile, Alabama, Saturday, four thirty p.m. kickoff. That's West Coast. Yes. Kramer. Yep. So it's a seven thirty game. Well, I, I mean, I, I Col- Colby did the sheet work. No, no, no. Today, this is so. our time. I, I put in here. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Colby, so Colby did the hard game. work. Kickoff. Uh, a, a big matchup here in Mobile, Alabama. Tulane, a eleven point road favorite. Mm. I'll kick things off. Public money right now. They're all over South Alabama. Tulane, eight and one against the spread no. as a favorite. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> what do you mean? No. Continue your point. I'm just again. I'm doing my. I'm just commentating. Okay. Short words as you're talking. Willie Fritz, back to back seven and six seasons with bowl wins. South Alabama coming off a two and eleven season. They're already one and zero. Oh. The public is buying the South Alabama hype. No, thank you. Uh, four and Tulane, a four star BetQL pick. Uh, also, South Alabama. Interesting side note. They beat Southern Mississippi, who. This is how bad the Southern Mississippi program is. After one <laughs> loss, the coach resigned. Okay, so don't be chalking it up as like, oh man, South Alabama really got their shit together. Yeah. No, Southern Mississippi was a dying dog, and they got lucky taking it out of its misery. But Tulane is a much better program. <laughs> They're going to come in there and dominate. Colby, what are you doing, dude? Tulane, the past couple of years has oh. been my. If you follow the College Experience podcast. Has been my and, bread uh, and butter. Has been my sure bread and butter, man. Sign up for that. We'll yeah. put a link in the podcast notes. To sign up for the college experience, yeah, subscribe. That's a uh, we cover. We handicap every single Division One college football and college basketball game. So check it out. Um, but I, I I love Willie Fritz. Love what he's doing at Tulane. But I, guys, I watched this South Alabama Southern Miss game, and this South Alabama team is physical. Yes. They love to hit. You guys yes. love to run downfield. And another thing that I know about Willie Fritz, and since I've Tell covered Tulane more. so much, is that they. Always play close battles against a lot of their mm, opponents. They, they do. You know what I mean. So they, they're a heavy run team. They used to be triple option. Uh, Fritz's first couple of years, they kind of went into kind of a, a hybrid option, a t- heavy run attack. So I expect the clock, the clock to be an enemy. And uh, give me South Alabama plus the eleven points. So you're telling me you're going to start just fading the Sun Belt? We know about the Sun Belt. <laughs> Sun Belt is. You're good. talking yeah. about. Blue collar kids who want to get it done. The and you're belt. telling the me Rust belt. eleven. Po- <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm not going to go any deeper down that comment, Sean. Uh, I myself, I don't personally see color. Uh, South <laughs> uh, home dog. Uh, what was the spread we're picking it at? Eleven. Eleven. 11. Yeah. North of ten, as Colby pointed out. Again, Sun Belt are kids are tough. Some belt <laughs> kids are going to defend their home turf. And of course I'm going to take dogs early in the season. I've watched nothing but relative crap college football being, I get it. People are happy. College football's back. This is like when you go to a strip club and you haven't seen titties in a while. Cause you've been on a ship for three years. Any titty is a nice titty. 
<laughs> Ryan's only wait, Ryan's what? just look getting that because we're watching the Navy game and he's imagining a bunch of Navy guys getting no, up just, a ship and I seeing get tits people for the first being time. excited that college football is back. I just don't think we've seen a lot of games and and I haven't seen anyone uh, anyone at the level of Tulane look uh, super stellar. And I did see a South Alabama team, as Colby pointed out, they looked like they were a team that. If nothing else, I'm checking the effort box. Give me the plus eleven. I'm with the Danta. It was a mirage. Here. You guys are crazy. Of course, they're pushing them around. Their coach is about to quit. He wants nothing to do with uh, it. But look, I mean, but winning is contagious, Sean. And at South Alabama, Steve Campbell's been building this program since his third so year. So you know what else it, is yeah. contagious? <laughs> Quitting. And I think South <laughs> Alabama, they were close in close contact. They weren't following mm. uh, six foot distance regulations. Look, Tulane beats four win Houston team. 38, 31 a season ago, uh, five and eight uh, okay. army. They beat by nine 42, 33. Uh, they also got, they beat Tulsa by 12. Okay. I think Tulsa look, Tulsa was better than uh better than their record, but still I, I like our spot for South Alabama. I, I, I know what's, I know what speaks and that's a record nine and one. Let's make it 10 and one with South Alabama UTSA. Going up against Texas State, Texas State a minus seven home favorite in San Marcos, Texas. Colby, why why are we talking about this game here <laughs> in the six pack? What are you? Uh, I, just, I mean, this is just easy. I think this is going to be an easy play for us. Uh, if you saw the one compelling game this past weekend, or the the most compelling game, I think uh, was Texas State SMU. SMU Yo. coming off of a ten win season. By Texas a mile, State right? took them down to, and and really Jake Spavadol was a was a, a new coach last year. Struggled out the gate, but as the season went on, that team got better and better. They got a quarterback that's kind of wild, kind of Johnny Manziel Jr. and, what and Brady McBride, are they from? the Sun Belt. The Sun Belt. Oh, and and look, UTSA. Here's a great re- like my one of my locks Saturday was <laughs> to fade Eastern Kentucky because they're breaking in a new coach, a new offense, a new defense in a COVID scheme. Well, guess what? UTSA is breaking in a new a new coach right now. Uh, so I would expect them to struggle. Give me Texas State minus the seven points. I like what Jack's, Jake Jake is doing. He also kind of, if you search deep, deep, do some deep background. He has a connection to Mike One Leach, and and that's something we like. Uh, again, I think I think you have to give teams that already played some some level of an advantage because playing an actual game is probably better than being rested. In this case. Again, coming back to the conference, coming back to a team that I thought looked impressive. You said it was one of the more. It was the best. It was clearly the best game I watched. Yeah. The, the, the the Southern Miss South Alabama on Thursday was pretty good. Yeah, the level in this game was a bit yeah. higher in my opinion. So I, again, I'm riding with you. That's let's make it two Sun Belt teams. Sun Belt baby, Fun Belt. I'm going UTSA. Oh. Fuck you guys. Oh I was gonna gosh. say Sean had you go first so he could start <laughs> copying, but here we go. <laughs> Texas San Antonio, they're five and one against the spread in their last six games. And you look at the you look at the breakdown of Beck UL, they're both horrific. Team grade, D versus a D minus, skill no, grade, no, D no, no. versus D minus, offensive grade, D versus D. Dude, you gotta see that tide turn. Look, you bring in a new coach, he takes over a horrible system. Spavado did last year. This guy's a money coach. He's coming in, and I don't think he's going to be at Texas State very long because they're going to make some bowl games soon over the next couple of years. Texas State was. Yeah. A, I watched Texas State play a good team in SMU, yeah. and they looked like a team that should have been on the field with them. It's only a, t- a touchdown, is what we're picking. And at. UTSA new head coach. Tell me, you're going to break in a no, new I mean, offense, again, new defense? I love. I'm standing by UTSA. The Roadrunners. If you're, I'm with. I'm with the uh, picked on D. Let's go. Throw the shades up. Now we got a uh, a game. A lot of people are talking about. A lot of heat on the <laughs> internet. Charlotte squaring off against App State. App State a whopping twenty and a half point favorite in Boone, North Carolina. Oh, to Boone, beautiful town. Colby, yeah. Are you are you riding with the big uh, favorite here? Are you going chalk I'm with dog- App State? I'm, I'm dogging it up here. Uh, shop around though. I, I saw this line at 22 mm. at one point, 22 and a half, 21 and a half. I saw it down to 17 at another place. So it's it's been all around. So you're you're this is your first uh, chalky play of the day for Colby. Look, Colby Will, the Will Healy took over uh, Charlotte last year, and I, and I like App State. But once again, breaking in a new coach, although he was there as their O line coach. Um, but Will Healy taking over for Charlotte did a great job in year one. Took them, they just started their football program in the past decade, yeah. and he took them in his first year to a bowl. He's I'm also, also on uh, Charlotte. Chris Reynolds, quarterback, 22 passing touchdowns, put up the second most yards in uh, school history, and uh, he also led the conference USA with a school record 153.6 passing efficiency. 
And he was also the 49ers second leading rusher with 791 yards. This is a guy who can put up some points. And you're, you're given a guy like that who can put up a ton of points, a ton of points that that's just a recipe for covering a big number. Also, they call themselves the Charlotte 49ers. Like, come on! That can do you, you know not why? think of another year? Do you, do you know why? Hills. We we we've, yeah. we've actually gone down this road <laughs> on the podcast before. It was Sean. I don't listen Something to the Something happened in nineteen forty nine. The college almost got closed. <laughs> yeah, well, so they celebrated not? not closing it by calling themselves the Forty Nine. But why not? Now you're a college. You're looking to get some buzz for your Charlotte University. Why not call yourself the Sixty Niners? And then. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, like, oh, it's just a sex thing. No, well, they're up. 1969 Charlotte. was the year we landed on the moon. Oh. You have mo- uh, you have an astronaut as your fucking yeah. mascot. How awesome would the that be? Shot. Have the you- 69ers. He's he's there. This is one giant move for mm-hmm. mankind. Yeah, he- they, they did a recent new uniform that got a lot of scrutiny on the internet because they put CLT, which you know, you oh. get, as you can imagine, oh, wow. the. Uh, that, that is a disgusting. Just to show you, just to show you the new uniforms. Uh, uh, well, here, here's what I would say. And the jersey <laughs> says CLT. Oh man! Wow! Right? It, it says really CLT on the logo, and then there's that. <laughs> it really. Uh, Hopefully, they don't actually print an eye in there. Once again, I, I'm going to inform you guys of a little known fact here. App, App State, what conference they in? They're in the Sun Belt. Why are you guys fighting the Sun Belt? That, look, they played last year. College this game was matters. actually closer. College than College yeah. matters. In the South, the Sun Belt is the conference I've targeted this year for like my it, blind man. mega lean in whale play of week <laughs> two because this this conference is filled with kids that just want to just smash. And you, you guys don't think the guy, the kids at Clit University want to smash? Clit, Clit University. <laughs> Come on, what are you talking Clit-a? about? Maybe it's Clit. Also, Kramer, our pals over at BetQL, oh. pointing out all the sharp money on Charlotte. Fifty-three percent of the tickets, but ninety-two percent no. of the money. The big betters, the mega whales, no. like Colby and, and our and myself, moving this number twenty and a half. But you're right. Maybe there's maybe there's yeah, some places you can yeah. even get a bigger one. I'm actually seeing a hundred percent of the tickets on uh, on uh, Charlotte. So uh, perhaps a problem with the data. Yeah. No. I I uh, <laughs> I I think Charlotte's the more public team here, especially since no, the number. No, App State's a much bigger. Uh, team, what are you talking about? They have uh, brand recognition. On, I'm saying based on the data, I think the 49ers are the spot here. Now, w- whether or not you like them, look, if you want to take a team called the 49ers heading to Boone to take on a team called the Mountaineers in the Sun Belt, good luck to you, the, sir. They played a se- you. they played a season ago in App State, won by 15, and that was just Will Healy's second game as head coach. Where was that game? That was in. Uh, yeah, that was in. I think it was in App. Oh, it was okay. <laughs> Fifty six forty one, some for fucking basketball score. Because they quickly. I'm three and zero on the Sun Belt schools, baby. Hey. Oh yeah, I like it. Before we get to the second half of the six pack, want to give a shout out to DraftKings. That's right, man. Football is finally back. <laughs> We're living it. We're breathing it. My football juices. We need to get one of those uh, plexiglass things in the studio so I don't get my oh, football whoa. droplets all over no. the place. <laughs> no. Kick off the. Uh, NFL season DraftKings is giving New Year's as a free shot at a $1 million top prize with a total of $3 million up for grabs this Thursday's contest. So Thursday, the opening night kickoff, you can get one of your showdown lineups in again, showdown, super fun. It's like DFS on steroids. And uh, again, I'm just piling up millionaire maker lineup after millionaire maker lineup. They're only five bucks this year. Uh, I just can't. uh, And the best part, Scott Tolzien, he is a coach, so now there's no way he can mess up your one million dollar prize. Oh, although he is, he is on the yeah. Cowboys, so maybe he can help you get a million dollars by telling uh, Dakota Rain to throw two pick sixes in the uh, Monday night game. We'll see. But all you gotta do to get in on these giant prizes, download the DraftKings app now and use code SGP for a limited time. New users can get a free shot at the one million dollar top prize and three million dollars in total prizes. Don't miss this extra special week one bonus. Enter code SGP to get a free shot. The one million dollar top prize with your first deposit. That's code SGP only at DraftKings. Make it rain. Minimum five dollar deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. I see (laughs) DraftKings.com. For details, nailed it, Sean. One one quick uh, update to some verbiage. I think to be a little bit more 2020. Yes. Millionaire maker opportunities, not lineups. 
Why? Oh, is lineup is lineup already? Because you know, I'm say, owning the lineup. I want. Oh, I didn't say that. I was just trying to be a little careful. It's just let's just call them opportunities, Sean. Opportunities. All right. Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers squaring off against Louisville in Louisville. This is a eight o'clock East, five o'clock Pacific kick. Louisville, an eleven and a half point favorite. Kramer, I'll let you s- start things off here. What are you doing? Uh, this was a team that Colby and I both, I think, liked in the in the preseason college football preview, and that's Louisville here. I, I think Louisville is a team that can do some things. Maybe Colby's going to surprise me and tell me he's going to take the points with Western Kentucky. But uh, I played chess with this man before. I know where he's going. <laughs> Louisville is a team. I think you look to pounce on early. They're going to come out hot. And you know, now we're talking about major conference football here. Louisville could surprise the ACC. Uh, and and I think will surprise some in the ACC. They're, they're going to be in the mix this year, and I think they come out with a a massive blowout to open the season. So spread it does not matter in this one, Sean. Let's lay that lay it again. I'm three favorites, one dog so far. Uh, I'll back you up, man. Oh, okay. Uh, Louisville, like Scott Satterfield, unbelievable first year. They were really projected to be I'm, bad. I'm a little worried about the hype around him. Dude, People seem to be quite excited about the Satterfield th- experience. They have like three elite players, Macal Cunningham, a quarterback, Tutu Atwell, wide receiver, and, and Javian Hawkins at running back. These guys are all really good at the skill level. Uh and But I, isn't this one of those games where the spread is only under two touchdowns because people are being cute? Probably. Pro- I think last well, year it was a close. My game. power ranking yeah. has this at eighteen and a well, half. And also yeah. I, I think Louisville, this could be a game if it wasn't played if it wasn't the first game of the season, I think this is an easy team for Louisville to overlook and maybe not take seriously. And you worry about Western Kentucky covering that spread. But I think it's the home opener. You're playing another Kentucky team. I yeah. think Louisville is going to be up for this game. And last time they played, Louisville was able to shut down their uh, running back, Gage Walker, holding him to 41 yards on 14 carries. And Western Kentucky, they're bringing in a quarterback, Davis Shanley. Didn't, ap- didn't attempt to pass. Last season, that's good. He played. Uh, he played a little bit in his uh, freshman year, but now he took his whole sophomore year off. Now he's coming in cold, going to Louisville on the road. I, I just think that's a lot. And normally, this th- you could see a situation where Louisville would look past this, and you'd worry about them not covering the spread. But I, I think at home, home opener, they're going to be up for this game. K- keep your eye on if you're a, uh, a Western Kentucky fan. I think they might do the, t- the two quarterback system or something because they have a Maryland grad transfer coming in. Um, but yeah, I, I just think they're just completely out. Out the the talent level is is pretty big on this one. And I that think. might yeah. matter in some of these games. Yeah. I think. And Satterfield is no think, no yeah. tune up games for either side. Clay Helton's brother's the coach of Western Kentucky. He's a really good coach. He is him. good. Won nine games, but they did lose to Central Arkansas last year. Okay. Well, that, those <laughs> Central are Central Arkansas is awesome. Bearcats, right? <laughs> the Bears. Bears. Syracuse, yeah. the Orange Men, heading down to North Bears. Carolina, Chapel Hill. UNC a 22 point favorite 9 a.m. West coast kick uh, Colby. I was telling you, Tommy DeVito, the Syracuse quarterback. He's not scared of UNC because he remembered in 2018 beating them. And yeah, that was in Syracuse, but now they're down in UNC and they're getting 22 points. Yeah. Sharp money is on uh, UNC according yeah, to BetQL, and Syracuse is one and four against the spread in their last five on the road. But I love me some upstate New York. Give me Syracuse. The Orangemen stay alive and hang on to this giant spread at it's a plus bad spot twenty-two. For Syracuse, it's a bad spot for Syracuse. Colby, are you are you rocking chalk here? I mean, I'm all over North Carolina in the to play in the ACC championship. So I'm I'm thinking like, look, you look at the quarterback through thirty-eight touchdowns and six picks, Sam Howell. Better Sam House good. Better than better stats than Trevor Lawrence did, and uh, and then you return two thousand yard running backs, two thousand yard receivers. Got two of the best coordinators, which I think will be head coaches. But first game of the year, you got to get some jitters. Give me the cues in twenty two. Yeah, it's just too it. much. To- I mean, Tommy DeVito. He's had his struggles, and when I was hyping him up in the text thread, you were saying uh, he kind of killed you last year on the win total. But what? he's not—he's not afraid to put the ball up, and that's what I want in a team getting 22 points. A guy who's not afraid to throw the ball when they do get down big and they're facing soft coverage. You need a guy who's going to be able to chuck it down the field. Yeah, and and I mean, it wasn't really all Devito's fault a season ago. The O line did not give him a lot of <laughs> a lot of time to back there, so. I expect you know them. They they do bring back some players that are key. Uh, now the problem is is that you weren't very explosive last year, but twenty two points. 
just stay in this game. Babers is a good coach. He's a proven coach. He might even be coaching for his job this year. Can I, so can I come make, on, do it, Kramer. Take the can twenty-two. I, can point I make a favorite. suggestion on the better way to play this game? In my opinion, is the over. Because mm. I think what you're going to see is Sy- Syracuse. We've seen if you watch enough ACC ball outside of that Clemson spot away from from the dome. This is a Syracuse team that generally doesn't show up for a fight on the road. I definitely don't think they're going to show up for a fight in this spot. This is a tremendously bad spot for them going down to North Carolina. A lot of hype around Mac Brown. And I, if there's one thing you say about Mac Brown, I don't think the team will be sleepwalking for this. Oh one. no, UNC's recruiting in the top five in the nation right now. They're dropping bags. They're bringing in it's just a too team many points though. 42, ca- 24. 42, yeah. 24 my pick. 42, 24. I, like I said, I think the over is the better play, but I, yeah, Sean, I'm sticking to chalk because I, I, I think I don't love North Carolina this year. I don't, I, I hate Syracuse in this spot. I think I wish I would have bet it before it crossed the key number of 21. <laughs> but if you look at the breakdown of the money, it, it's not like it's getting completely lopsided. So I, I think the book sees something. I think they understand some smart people are coming in on Syracuse and I don't see it being bought back even at 22. So I think this is safe to play after 24, Sean. Wow. Yeah, my power rankings have this. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take any amount of points with Syracuse in this road spot. Baylor at home in Waco. Horrible documentary. Didn't like wow. that show. Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> kicks off Saturday, or it wasn't a documentary. It was like a drama that they remade. It was pretty shit. I don't know why everyone was all hyping it up. Baylor, they're laying 18 and a half points mm. against La Tech, aka mm. Louisiana Tech. Colby, what are you doing here in this game? Uh, I think I'm moving the nine and one. You were right, Kramer. Um, yeah. But I'm on uh, the Bulldogs here. Mm. I am on. Look, Skip Holtz is an East Carolina guy. All right, his Louisiana Tech Bulldogs won ten games this season. They go shut out Miami, the ACC's big time school. Miami, right? Shut them out in the bowl game. Yes, I think Baylor bringing in new head coach Dave Aranda. Now I like Aranda. I think it's a good hire. I think they have good talent there, but the number's too big. The number is too big. It, Give me the eighteen points. I think Col- ba- Baylor's going to get this thing done. Give me a twenty-eight to uh, give me a twenty-eight to seventeen final score. Colby, you missed the, you missed one of the key the key facts about this game. What's that? Private school pussies. <laughs> for I, I chose to ignore it for any of the previous games. So if, if there's a private <laughs> school in there, I apologize for not for not calling it out. But I, I love this this La Tech team. You called it out. It's the coaching edge. Yeah. And I think this is a team that's going to come in ready to play ball right off the bat. To your point, Baylor, they're probably going to have the talent advantage and they can very easily blow the blow the roof off this place, but you know, it is called McLean Stadium. So I'm maybe going, they will blow it off the roof. But I'm going to take the points with Louisiana Tech. Sean's going to tell us why. Somehow Sean became a Baylor fan over the yes, past couple of yeah, years. They've yeah. won him some money and he's willing to look the well, other they direction. Five, they were five and one against the threat in their last six. So yeah, God forbid I like a team that wins me fucking money. He's ride. a big fan of Ken Starr, who's I think somewhere somewhere involved in their athletic hey, program. Yes. Right? If your if your college football program has a horrific abuse scandal tied to it, then I naturally lean to it. Shout out to Baylor and Penn State. First wow. off, our buddies Beck UL five star pick for Baylor, the, and and Baylor certainly has a lot of questions to be answered post Matt Rule era. However, what was Baylor's weakness last year as a, a as a team? The thing that slowed them down was getting sacked. And what does Louisiana Tech struggle at? Oh, the sack rate. They were 122 level. in the sack rate last year, and they lost two of their three top pass rushers. They're going to struggle to put pressure on Charlie Brewer and he is going to carve them up and they're going to win by at least 21 points. Give me Baylor baby minus 18 if, and a if, half. If Charlie, you can't be afraid of a big number early. Charlie Brewer though, he, yeah, it's great to have a senior quarterback back, but he does run a lot and and he got injured a lot because he was running. I'm looking forward to seeing Skip Holtz cuz he's got an aggressive defense much like South Alabama. Someone's going to lay the wood. It's one game. On Charlie Brewer. I, I mean, right? I understand being down on them for the season, but come on. I don't we, think Baylor should be uh, Baylor's just not a team that should be laying this kind of points. Yeah. Don't have the defensive prowess. We're going to see it Saturday, Ryan. If you're looking to make uh, some better bets, and Kramer, you might need some. I'm looking at your picks. You might need the help of BetQL. The only app you'll need to make smart bets this season, college football, NBA, MLB, and of course, 
the National Football League. All up there on BetQL. They show you uh, where the money's coming in, the splits. Uh, they got a sweet best bets algorithm. Mm. Can it defeat the Danta base? Find out. But again, tons of cool info, tons of every, any sort of like random trend you want. BetQL is tracking it. The app is completely free. And if you want to get their premium service, we got a 20% off coupon. All you got to do is go to betql.co, enter promo code SGP20. That's betql.co, enter code SGP20. All right. Finished uh, taking down the Colby six pack. Now, the top 25 games. Can we just call this the ACC games yeah. this week? <laughs> The only real yeah. conference playing ball. Man enough to how, play. How is it that they they how is it the small conferences and the ACC were able to figure Big it out? Big 12's playing but not against each other. How how did they figure it out? How did it happen? Cold how does Central Arkansas figure it out and Michigan still like I don't know, we're scared. A lot of bullshit politics going, you know. All right. Let's t- let's talk Clemson Wake Forest. Kicking off Saturday 4:30 p.m. in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Clemson coming in as a huge favorite, laying 31 and a half. It's a big number. Now the, it's interesting because Clemson has been dominant uh against the ACC, obviously. Six and zero against the spread last six versus the ACC, covering big numbers. However, in the last six years against Wake, they're only two and four against the spread. So maybe there's a little bit of uh, you know, little brother here, Wake. Getting up for these games, Trevor Lawrence obviously a big uh, part about the let us play thing. Seems like he's chomping at the bit to get back on the field. Clemson they won every road game last year by thirty five, <laughs> except UNC where they uh, won by just one well, point. Should have lost, yeah. Probably should have lost the game. Colby, are you laying the big number with Trevor Lawrence and Clemson, <laughs> or are you taking Wake Forest? I'm laying the big number because I learned the hard way last year. Um, Wake sucks. I, I took Wake plus I think 38 last year. <laughs> They're hard, and they lost 52 to three. No, I love the Wake Forest head coach Dave Clawson. Mm-hmm. He's doing a great job there, and I think Sam Hartman will be fine. They're going to make a bowl. They're, they'll be a. They'll bite some teams this, this year? year. Yeah. No. Wake will be good. No. Watch. Just not against Clemson. They don't have the players to to match, and especially the best receiver Wake has. Is sitting out because he's going to go to the NFL. Jamie Newman's gone, but Hart- Hartman will be good. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sixty is the total, and it's thirty two and a half. Dude, that's good. Yeah, I, I Clemson just 10. Clemson just lights them up. Yeah, or thirty one and a half. I'm Kramer, sorry, Kramer. You're you're on Team Clemson. Uh, of course, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a twenty eight point dog or thirty one point dog. You got to be on it, right? If it's a favorite, it's for <laughs> it's for real money. Uh, Ryan, Kramer real chalk week. Kramer but, over here. Uh, my, you know, the note here is just. Uh, Wake far look Wake Forest not a not a team I'm looking to grab points with and hope they can hang on. I think between what Clemson's offense is going to be able to do and Clemson's defense probably is going to be able to do this kind of shapes up to one of those games where unless Clemson trips in the first half and really struggles to score early, I don't see how this isn't one of those games Clemson ends in the 40s and maybe Wake scores yeah, 10 points. This is like 49-10. Yeah. Next so up Another top twenty-five game I, I, is UAB the top twenty-five team. I'm not sure. Wow. UAB they are they're they're number one right now. <laughs> Shout out to the Dragons. <laughs> Enter the Dragon yeah, and they're heading. Blazers, the Blazers. Oh, sorry, but they're <laughs> wait their mascot is the Dragon, right? Yeah, the Komodo Dragon. Remember oh, okay. they were, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the right. So sorry, the I called Komodo them. Dragon their mascot's the Dragon. Sean, they're the Blazers. Sean I mean, just, come on, what the fuck? Big Cisco guy. He wanted to get that in. <laughs> their mascot's the Dragon. Miami. In Miami, five o'clock kick, and this is a Thursday game going head to head with the NFL. Miami lane fifteen and a half points. Here's what I'm looking at, Colby. I'm going back and forth here. UAB they didn't look amazing to me against Central Arkansas. No. BetQL is on Miami at, at minus fifteen and a half. Miami's bringing in the transfer quarterback. I, I'm going to call him Derek, but it's D apostrophe E R I Q. Derek King. Yeah. Derek King. Houston transfer coming off a uh, 50 touchdown season, 36 passing, 14 running. Miami 12 and 5 against the spread in September, which I think is actually a trend worth talking about because I like these Florida teams in September, the hot weather, although it is hot in Alabama as well. But it's going to say it's a little bit humid. Miami is two and ten against the spread when they're a 14 point favorite or more. Is that enough to scare you away? What are you doing? I'm on the fence here. Uh, uh, can I tell you what you yeah. don't do? You don't lay more than two touchdowns with Miami. 
Yeah. You don't like two, yeah. more than two touchdowns with this well, Miami that trend, team. That trend backs it up. I'll tell you the skip. I mean, look, De'Ara King, by the way, 50 touchdowns two seasons ago. Last year, he played four games, only th- completed 51% of his got passes. A, also, got a question this dude's heart. Yeah. He quit on his team. Fucking so, quit. Yeah. Now he's in Miami, which yeah. is the, which is an epicenter for dudes who don't actually want to do anything <laughs> and, except right. for wear a goddamn he, turnover he's, well, chain. Well, he's really talented. That is pretty cool, though. Yeah, he's really talented. No. So the, the wheels turnover could chain come, is not cool. The, the wheels could come off. But I, I'll tell you the thing that, like, I'm going to ride with UAB. I don't love this game, and mainly because Bill Clark. A, he's struggled against the big schools, but also B, he ran a two quarterback system a week ago. You don't like that? I I hate that. Yeah. If you I don't have, if you don't that. have, if you got two, you got zero. It right? drives me crazy. But but I do love the fact when you look at everything else, they return a ton on defense. They had the number eighth, number eight defense in the country last year. Miami had the number eleven, and the fact that uh, that both these teams, by the way, return all five offensive linemen. I'll, I'll tell you what. I know there's a lot of hype with with King and Miami. If, if I if show it to me and maybe yeah, I'll I'm, consider I'm going to ride UAB here. Hard for me to want to lay two touchdowns with Miami. Yeah, and we know uh welcome to UAB. He's a friend of the program. So I'll ride with UAB. Well, I mean their athletic director was trying to get a Komodo dragon. Yeah. Yeah, I mean That's pretty that's badass. Right so, up our yeah, alley. Let me just let me just uh <laughs> just muse you with something. Imagine a world where the Miami football team isn't ready to play week 1. They're partying. Shocking, right? yeah. Huh? yeah. Shocking. Well, I mean, UAB is easily a team that's you can overlook, and they've already had game experience. They're coming in, uh, like you're saying, Ryan, with a little experience. Question versus, King's heart too. Yeah, I just I'm scared that He's mercenary. I'm scared of the two quarterbacks. The two quarterback system. Johnson throws turnovers, man. Again, dude, I'm I'm telling you, I think we're gonna see in college that there might be a massive advantage to having a game under your belt, especially with these teams that aren't practicing. I, it just, it just seems like you're not like, why not take some of these teams that have a week under their belt yeah. uh, Miami and, and why not fade Miami? Cause fuck Miami. Yeah. I mean, look, they're Oh, and two against the conference USA in the past nine months, there they go. lost the Florida international in Miami. And then they lost a bowl game where they got shut out by Louisiana tech. Miami wins this game by like six points. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Sean, you can definitely see them not taking it too serious. Last game of the top 25. Or no, maybe we got some more here. Notre Dame <laughs> laying twenty and a half against Duke. That's right, Duke playing football. Colby. Well, actually, I'm going to talk to you guys about the movie Rudy. Um, this is a private school pussy bowl right here. No, oh, come on, you can't. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a guy by the name of Rudy Ryan who went to Notre Dame, and there wasn't anything pussy about Rudy. Do you guys know Rudy was actually not a box office success and it kind of came to light after the uh, uh, you know, VHS. You know, yeah. America's late. They're late to the curve on sports movies. Kingpin was not a box office success either. No, I mean, neither was awesome film. film ever, neither right? was Boondock Saints. Speaking of, of <laughs> that's, Irish that's people, not a sports movie, <laughs> <laughs> Irish people. Okay, okay. Yeah. This is, this is the, uh, the pirate private school pussy battle. Notre Dame at home, South Bend, 1130 AM kick. Squaring off against Duke, uh, to me, it feels like uh, Notre Dame just rolls here. Fifty percent of the tickets, eighty-nine percent of the money, according to BetQL. Notre Dame last five games, five and zero against the spread. Duke one four and one against the spread. Notre Dame uh, returning a bunch of offensive linemen, very good. Yeah. This just feels like a game where Ian Book uh, puts up a bunch of numbers, has a very good offensive day, and the the Ian Book hype train, the Ian Book Heisman stuff. Starts getting a little buzz, falls apart later in the season. But I, I feel like this is Notre Dame's game to mess up. Am yeah. I right, Kramer or, or Colby? Uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm gonna take Notre Dame too. Just I mean, look, Duke I think actually has a good defense, which is weird because tra- tra- traditionally it's the other way around. Cutcliffe's a good coach. He brings in a grad transfer and Chase Bryce, but they did just lose their starting center for this. I think for the season, if memory serves me correct. But he's out for this game for sure. And uh, and I just think Notre Dame's O line and D line so good. Returning just great players all over the the O line and D line. The last time yeah. Duke went to South Bend, they upset the mighty Irish 38 30. A couple fifth year seniors that remember that revenge game. Uh, well, and also Notre Dame beat the shit out of Duke last year. I it, think it's going to be right. I mean, the, the number's right. I feel like I feel well, like it's right around like 17. And if 20, Sean right? is going to believe his words about coaching mattering this year more than most. How the fuck are you gonna put Brian Kelly uh, again uh, above the czar, the coaching czar, Mister? Give me, uh, help me out. I'm David blanking. Cutcliffe. Cutcliffe. Yeah. Thank you. The Manning, the Manning whisperer, the Daniel Jones whisperer. <laughs> I, I think there's. Oh, you see his work there. 
Not in, to, in Daniel Jones. Not to mention the Notre Dame. Notre Dame still refusing to admit they're fully part of the conference. So <laughs> they're fuck Notre Dame. Let's go, Duke. So Daniel I'll, Jones, baby. All right. 45 17 Notre Dame. Final score. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Pussies. Before we get to the rest of the top 25 games, just want to give a shout out to Ace Per Head. That's right. You had to work. Hey. Why not start your own business? Why not become a bookie? That's right. Ace per head makes it so easy to become a bookie. Anyone can do it. All you gotta do is go to aceperhead.com slash SGP. Use that link. You get up to six weeks free. Don't need to know anything about computers, how they work. I mean, I guess you need to know a little bit. How to turn on, check <laughs> yeah. your email, fill out a form. But other than that, you're good to go. Ace per head will take care of you. And truly, Ace is the place if you want to become a sports bookie. And why not? Now is the time you could be booking college football, NFL football, M- NBA, NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, mm, MLB, baseball. golf. I mean, there's going to be majors, NFL. It's just a, it's a cornucopia of degeneracy. It's dangerous. Time to get on the right side of the counter. Just go to aceperhead.com slash SGP. Use that link and you can get up to six weeks free. Let's head to beautiful Manhattan, Manhattan, Kansas, that is. Mm. Kansas State, a 10 point favorite against Arkansas State. Colby, I'll let you kick off this one. Uh, well, shout out to, to Alex, oh. by the way. K State fan. Shout Alex. out. Yeah. Um, we love Alex. Yeah, he he loves getting in Kramer's head about the Chiefs and him not being high enough on him. Yeah, I got him winning the division now. I don't see what his major <laughs> malfunction. And is. I was completely wrong on K State last year. First off, I like K State. Uh, like, Shout out to Bill Snyder. Yeah, big big Bill Snyder guy. But we, look. once once the reason we got a negative review because Sean did not know who <laughs> Bill Snyder was. Uh, I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. Yeah, uh, but Arkansas State looked good last week. I thought they had their chances to win the game. Kind of fumbled away their did, opportunities. They did look uh, yeah. solid against Memphis. I think they were up fourteen seven at one point. I'm gonna take the just the fact that they played a game already. I'm gonna take the ten points. I think they got the line. They nailed it pretty much here. Uh, so give me give me the Red Wolves and the Sun Belt. I'm backing up the Sun Belt. Well, again, I'm, I'm again take the Sun Belt, take the team who's already covered a game. They've yeah. gotten loose. They understand how to win better some money. Now K- they're headed to Manhattan. K- I don't know if K- the win. I, I mean, I are you high on K State? I mean, I think they'll. Uh, I'm high on their over the over on their win totals. I mean, I'm but high, but I'm not high on K State. Chris Klein is doing a great job there. I think way Please, way ahead of where I thought he would be. But give me 28, 21. K State gets it done. Well, and 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 what we're picking this at at ten. 10. Yeah. So right right on the number. I I think you still got to take the the. I'm gonna stick to my my guns with this one. I want the team that came out played a good game. They got the cover. They're gonna get the cover again. Sunbelt, baby, let's go. Sunbelt, fun belt. I'm gonna go uh, Kansas State. <laughs> Have we agreed on a single picture? <laughs> yeah, the uh, winners. The, that's it. Uh, Louisville, yeah. Kansas <laughs> State, five star BetQL, six and two against the spread. Their last eight. What I'm worried about a little bit is I'm hearing rumblings that Kansas State has kind of been hit hard uh, by injuries and COVID. So mm. look for this. Look for this number to possibly uh, shrink. By game time, but I'm still taking K State minus ten. Well, so here's the reason. So you're saying you take you take it early if you like Arkansas yes, State. Yes, if so you like down. Arkansas State, uh, which you guys do again, which is the wrong side. But <laughs> bet it now because that ten is going to shrink by kickoff. That I, I'm telling you. So you're going to wait to get. Uh, your are you worried though that the fact K State normally a, a such a dangerous environment to go into mm, with yeah. them only having 25 percent fans? I'm like, okay, mm. maybe it's not so dangerous anymore. Here's the thing. Like a friend of the program, Danny Solomon pointed out, who's a Chiefs fan oh. and a Kansas native. He's allowed to say this. I'm just repeating his words, not mine. <laughs> but that the people of Kansas City are so big that social distancing doesn't uh, make a difference. So that the fact that it's only 25%, it'll feel like 75%. <laughs> just letting oh, yeah. in the fattest of the fat to make sure they fill up the volume. I, it'll I mean, feel like it's 50% full, maybe 75%. <laughs> really, what I like about it is Kansas State's are returning eight of their. 11 defensive starters. And I'll tell you this if you're playing DraftKings and you're dabbling with the uh, DGens only college football oh, DraftKings, serious DGens. Put uh, Briley Moore, the Kansas State tight end, because uh, Arkansas State had a huge problem with the tight end last game. Look and I think show. Briley Moore could go off and have a big game. He's going to help carry Kansas State to a 
close cover. It's going to be a 13 point win. Colby, what happened to Sean? I, I don't know, man, but, uh, but I'm impressed. Hold it, on a second. And if you really want DFS stuff, make sure you check out the Periscope. Yeah. And, uh, and your brother. Yeah. And see Nick is, is uh, I'm seeing in our Slack channel, which if you guys aren't in there now, I don't know what you're doing. Steve uh, Shermer, our golf guy, <laughs> oh, Jesus. every uh, Thursday through Sunday, he's just hosting like a call in <laughs> show via chat and just going off on these. Uh, you got random questions that you want to answer <laughs> at mean, six in the morning. It's just, you're drowning in golf now. It's, it's really great. And then the NBA channel is going off. Uh, it's, it's pretty fun in there. And, and again, it's a, it's nice to have open as a second window there uh, when you're mixing it up with these games and trying to chase, you gotta have the slack going. It, what's great about it is you can have that friend to, to agree with your chase yes. logic that you can have that friend that says, hey, bias. why don't you throw a fourth team in that parlay <laughs> you know, it, to it, juice it up a little bit. It's like in the cartoons where there's like a devil on one shoulder and an <laughs> angel on their shoulder, but our slack is just two devils. Two like, devils. Yeah. That's a great pick. Yeah. You should double up. Yeah. If you double up, then you'll be back Wait, to even. Where'd you get that line? I want a piece. <laughs> Hashtag Dejins only by Dejins for Dejins. Absolutely. Georgia Tech, Florida State in Tallahassee, Saturday, 12 30 p.m. kick. 12 and a half point is the spread. And we're seeing this with this Navy game yeah. where sometimes the uh, triple option has uh, an advantage. But I think the in the first game, well, they, it they're almost, out. They're out of the triple option business. Oh, Georgia Tech they is they're yeah. out of the triple option business, which is why they sucked so much Jeff hard Collins, dick. Yeah. We yeah. should we paid Sean the compliment. That's what happened. Yeah. Got we, to my we head. Jinxed it. We jinxed. Uh, I mean, I think w- what we saw last year was a team that had a ridiculous win total. They they didn't sn- what was it? Four and a half? Yeah. Was it? Something yeah. stupid we, we, like that. We, we made a lot of money on What they end up yeah. winning? What was their I think they won uh I think they, 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 won, th- I think they went three against they NC State, Miami and uh but this was not a team. USF, this yeah. was not a team. This was a team in a rebuild. Florida State, meanwhile, is in a constant. Well, they're reloaded and they're going to be good this time. I think. What was the reason? What was the problem with the last coach? I think the last two, Jimbo Fisher. Don't people? He got out of town got because paid. the O line was. He went. It's uh, what six and six his final season. I think what you're seeing is I think you're seeing the classic example of a program that has historically been great. They lose the guy. And they are now struggling to find the next guy. And I think in most cases, what we end up learning is the guy was pretty good at hiring people that could recruit well, whether that's Frank Beamer, whether that's Paterno, whether that's Bobby Bowden. Yeah. Times change. And I think when we move on to these next coaches, the area that I think they continually shit the bed is they forget about the, the culture that got the program there and whether that's Justin fucking Fuente going in and trying to change things or Jimbo Fisher trying to say, we're not Bobby Bowden. Uh, it's always a problem. And I think they now are far enough removed at Florida state. Could we have a good coach? Maybe, maybe. Uh, yeah. But do you want to come out cold laying 12 and a half points with Florida state right now? I can tell you this. Do you man, want? And, and are you, that's an onions play because this team, Tallahassee, has done nothing but suck dick. Well, they've had the, for a couple years the and that's, worst offensive line in Power Five football, and and I don't know if it's fixed. But I can tell you this: Norvell's probably smart enough at Memphis. He, he was a good he coach. was at Arizona State prior to that. I think you have you know how you neutralize that? You get the ball out of the out of yeah. the quarterback's hands fast. It's and true. they have some real talent at the skill positions. And so that's the difference. This, this is a little fun little nugget. Uh, Norvell is 12 and three as a favorite of uh, 10 and a half to 21 points. So that, that kind of sweet spot of the 14 to 17 point, those couple key numbers where it's a team you're supposed to handle. He's got a pretty good record against the spread of handling that I, I'm going Florida state. I'm high on them uh, for the season. You're high for being high on them. Weed. But I, I don't love the number. It does feel a touch high. Kramer, you're on Georgia Tech. Colby, I'm on Florida State, but I don't like it. It like, seems like me, you, yeah. Well, uh, the scary thing is, like to me, I don't know that they can beat anybody if the, if that O line is that bad. You know what I mean? Because I think Georgia Tech's getting better, but I still think I, you look at this Florida State defense, and that is skilled. That is a skilled yeah. defense. No, I think they have a lot of talent. Yeah. I, I like the Norvell hire. The last time a game played between these two teams, Georgia Tech won, I think, right? No, the last time that Florida State would have covered was in 1998 in a 34 to seven battle. But the, so the last time they played, I think Georgia Tech won. Georgia Tech won yeah. the game. 2015, it was a 22 to 16 game. 
these games always tend to be close. I know Georgia Tech is in a complete rebuild, but I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a leap of faith and say that Florida State is still dog shit. If you're a Mike Norvell backer and they lose this game, watch out because your next five are all tough. I don't think they lose the game, but I think they win a tight game. And I think we're talking about how you know Coach Norvell has them playing because look at the way they gutted out that victory. And I, but I, but again, there's clearly something wrong and something toxic with that whole culture. And I don't want to, I don't off a year like this. I don't want to lay points with Florida state, Sean Kramer's against toxic masculinity. Not me. <laughs> I embrace it. Last game, Louisiana Lafayette, the raging Cajuns head to Ames. I was to face. I was state. I was state laying 11 and a half. I'm going to go all in on this Cajuns team. I love what they're doing with the run game. I, I, I mean, Trey Regas, <laughs> Elijah Mitchell combined Love for 5,203 rushing yards in their career. And uh, you know, the raging Cajuns, they're talking about going undefeated. Like just read it all the local raging Cajun stuff, which I actually did. They are, they're like all in on this season. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they come out with a, a straight out upset and the best Ames, shape of their lives. Would you say Ames isn't yeah. quite the same place uh, without a uh, packed stadium and the cyclones are known for starting slow. All those reasons I, I'm taking uh, uh, Louise and Lafayette catching the 11 and a half points. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'm going to, ba- I'm going to back you on that. You're I mean, steal look, my pick. A lot of people are, are big on uh, I look and I, I love Matt Campbell and Brock Purdy and this Iowa state team, but Billy Napier almost got hired at some big jobs and Louisiana Lafayette's good, man. They got a good quarterback and Levi Lewis. I think if you remember last year, Iowa state started slow to their season. They almost lost to uh, uh, FCS Northern Iowa. They took three overtimes for them to get past them in the first game. So give me Lafayette to cover this number. I think Iowa state gets the win, but Lafayette covers the my, number. My caution would be is my theory on the Iowa state home field edge is that it's a weird long trip. And in the in the colder months, there is a, a temperature difference, especially for some of the southern teams in the Big Twelve. Now it's early in the year, so I don't think there's going to be that disadvantage. Again, I'm going all in on the Sun Belt, so I will agree with you guys. Uh, I'm going. I, I picked every Sun Belt team playing oh, this weekend man. on catching on the picks. some rays. Uh, my my the reason the reason I think you you're right is early in the season, the weather, t- take the weather out of it. It's going to be a trip. Sure. Maybe it still impacts them. But the fact that this Iowa state team feeds off that crowd, yeah, I think matters in a game where guess which team is going to get up more easily. It's going to be the oh, Sunbelt yeah. team. Oh, yeah. Louisiana is, is going to be jacked for this game. And, and this is an early kick. Yeah. So the body that, that maybe benefits actually Iowa, but does it? Yeah, is that, I, are they in it, central time? Right? So the body clocks will be no, more normal for Louisiana Lafayette, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah. And whatever, we don't have to d- deep dive into this one. <laughs> I mean, they're at home. I'm just saying they're used to the time zone. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, it would be, I, mean, I don't know. I think it would be a good thing to kick off at 11 AM. Well, but, the, but there it's 11 AM to them, but that's early. They I, do they always kick at eleven? I would say probably. But not. it would feel earlier to Louisiana Lafayette, right? Would it? I mean, th- maybe by It'll an hour. Already had time. to travel. It's the, it's noon their time. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! All right, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> Wait, hold on, time is a flat circle. I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm nine and one, guys. Lock it up. Right, Colby's locking it up. Twenty-four or nothing BYU at with yeah. the time we're saying this. So what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> time to lock things up. Kramer, I'll let you kick things off. You and your uh, time zone stuff over there. What's your lock? What's your dog? And what's your tease? Uh, you know, someone is saying some pretty inflammatory things. Uh, lock it up. Just let's fade Miami. Uh, again, you don't you don't lay this many points with Miami. Fade Miami. Take take our as Sean puts it, our dragons, <laughs> the Blazers of UAB, for my dog. Sean, I I got a lot of you know for for someone who started out pretty chalky. I got some dogs on the board. I'm going to say, let's pick, let's pick my favorite Sunbelt team. It's going to be tough. Tulane goes down South Alabama on the money line. What do do we have a money line for that? It is plus two seventy five. Plus two seventy five. Over at South Alabama. AG. And for my tees, a lot of key numbers to get through here. First one, Texas State. Let's make that minus one. Okay. Col- Colby respects that line move perfectly <laughs> through the numbers. For my second uh, move, let's let's move Louisville down to five and a half. Okay. 
Western Kentucky, not not going to hold up their end of the bargain here. And the last leg of my tease, uh, let's let's send it. Let's uh, let's ship this Arkansas state line. Nah, actually, let's not do that. Let's ship the uh, a lot of these gross lines. Let's go UAB <laughs> up north of 21, 21 and a half. All right, Colby, lock, dog, and tease. Not my, a lot of good val- value propositions. My lock is the Louisville Cardinals. Yeah, I almost locked that up. Um, my dog. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna back you here and say the the Jaguars of South Alabama. No, that's a good pick. Uh, I, I would have made that my lock, but it's a better dog. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And to tease this thing up a little bit, let's go. Uh, give me Syracuse and 28. <laughs> <laughs> give me. Let's give me South Alabama and 17. Okay. Mm, oh, I should have done that. I give like that. me Louisville minus. What is that? What is that? Five and a half? Five and a half. Yeah. Okay. I like Love that it. too. Colby, nice job. Nice job on yeah. the tease. I'm excited to hear what Sean's got. <laughs> well, there's a lot of options. Yeah. Not a lot of good tease <laughs> options this weekend in college football. As they say, if you're teasing college football games, you're you have a real problem. <laughs> you're a hashtag Dejan only. Oh, let's see. Jesus. All right. Give me Charlotte plus 20 and a half <laughs> for my lock for my dog. <laughs> the 49ers. That's that clip. Give me uh give me Louisiana Lafayette plus Whoa. 330. Love that. And for my tease, um, let's see, we'll take K State down to four. Uh let's see, we'll take Baylor. Oh no. <laughs> Such a gross tease week. Louisiana minus five and a half. Sean, while you're thinking, fun way to have sorry, rip. Louisville minus five and a half. All right, continue. I don't want to confuse the audience. <laughs> and for my final pick, let's see. I will take uh, man, these teases are ugly. So K-State, Notre Dame minus fourteen and a half. K State, Louisville, Notre Dame is your is your tease. Yes. Are we are we okay. doing bonus uh, locks or no? Not this year. We can do a bonus lock. Sure, throw a bonus lock out there, Ryan. Well, I, I was just gonna say if you want to have some, well, if you want to have some fun, South Alabama parlayed with uh, Lafayette, that would be a nice payday. But for if you want to ask me for a bonus lock, bonus I, lock. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna t- South Alabama. Should <laughs> I just double up on my dog with the lock? Let's <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah, dude, come I, on, love it. Bonus lock. Give love me, it. give me, uh, give me Texas minus the forty three. Oh, okay. oh, that's right. We're supposed to go off board for <laughs> yeah, the lock. Yeah. I'm sorry, I broke the rules. Let me give a proper proper bonus lock. Texas Although, is gonna destroy UTEP. No, my bonus lock is Clemson minus thirty one and a half. Oh, you're staying on the. <laughs> you know what's okay. not a bad one is Kansas minus seven against the Chanticleers of Coastal Carolina. Do you like that one? Well, no, Colby, no. I prepped for that game and then you took it out of <laughs> oh, wow. six pack. I was like, no way, Les Miles loses back right. to back. To my years. bonus lock: Oklahoma State minus the twenty-two okay. against Tulsa. So my lock is uh, Charlotte plus twenty and a half. Colby Louisville minus eleven and a half. Kramer UAB plus fifteen and a half. Bonus locks: Kramer o- OK State minus twenty-two. Sean thirty-one and a half. Sean just Clemson, staying on the sheet, Texas, breaking the rules. Minus forty-three. <laughs> <laughs> fucking rules don't apply to Sean. No, I'm better than the rules. Make sure you go to mybookie.ag. Use that promo code SGP for a sweet deposit bonus. Yes. Make sure you sign up for the free roll football contest, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash contest. And subscribe to the college experience. Colby, Colby and Patty C. Pick Dundee. Pick Dundee. Periscope Saturday morning. Mm. And the uh the link will be in the show notes. All these links for the sponsors, all that's in the show notes. Very easy. If you have the Apple Podcast app, just scroll down. Tons of links. Sign up. Support the program. <laughs> well, what do you do with a link? You click it. You click it. Okay. Well, I feel like some of the people need that explained, Ryan. We get a lot of questions on how to do things and where to sign up. Just click the link. Uh, are, those they, for, are, are those for me? Yes, uh, that's uh, mostly Colby. <laughs> yeah, as they say, look down so you don't trip over the bar. <laughs> for the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. Let's go football, Kramer. Let it. Right.